right before uh, Palm Sunday, right before the, the final week of Jesus' life, before he would journey to the cross, something significant takes place that's shared with us in the book of John. It's found in chapter 12. It talks about um, just the generosity, the faith, the awe of Jesus made by this one woman by the name of Mary, how she just came and gave of her best to him. It's There's so many pictures found in this story, and I just wanted to share it with you. It's, it's such an incredible story that the Holy Spirit went out of his way to make sure the gospel writer included it so that we could hear about it to this day. John chapter 12, verse 1. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. I want to explain to you real quick. He goes to visit his friends. There's Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. They're friends. They do life together. Jesus would often go there to get away. It was it was almost like instead of having a vacation home, Jesus just had a friend's house that he would go visit. And he would just hang out with them. He would kick it. He was just, he would enjoy time with them. He would have a relationship with them. It says that Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. You may notice there's a pattern and a theme about them. Martha, she was an incredible woman who had a servant's heart. She was busy, 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 always serving, always taking care of everyone. That's That was her love language. Acts of service was how she showed love. The, the beauty of it was she was she was not slothful. She was fervent in her business. She worked hard. She took care of the home. The challenge was sometimes she would miss out relationally because she was so busy doing. It says that Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, your scripture might say, or might use different words, an expensive perfume. And she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. Mary took this incredibly valuable perfume. That was one of the ways that they stored wealth back then. They would have gold. They would have different types of coins. They would have spices. They would have perfumes. It wasn't, there, there was no Bitcoin back then. There, there, there was no, some of the investment mediums that we have now, they didn't have that at that time. This was one of the ways that they stored wealth. This was incredibly valuable. There's many arguments about how valuable it was. Some estimate it was half of a year's wages, like half of a, a year's salary. So if the average salary was, I don't know, 50,000, like 25 grand or how, six months worth of work. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected, saying, why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. Mary takes, excuse me, a year's wages. I stand corrected, not half a year's wages. <laughs> Mary takes this incredibly, incredibly valuable possession that she has, and she pours it out on Jesus's feet. She honors him. She blesses him. She doesn't hold back her best from the Lord. She gives her best to the Lord. Really, it reminds me of Abel back in Genesis when he gave his first and he gave his best and that God was pleased with his offering, that it was a, a soothing aroma to him. And Noah, after the flood, when Noah and his family came together and they gave an offering, it was, it was a sweet aroma to the Lord. There was a sweet aroma that went throughout the house. She had honored Jesus, but this dude, Judas, he was, he was a bad dude. He would eventually betray Jesus. He said, why wasn't this sold and given to the poor? Sometimes individuals with impure intentions will spiritualize or religiousize, if that's even a word, things to make people feel guilty, convicted, or condemned, but their motives are unhealthy. He said, why, did, why didn't you give this to the poor? Why, why did you waste this on Jesus? And we hear that and we go, that's the silliest thing ever, but that's what he said. What do you mean wasted on Jesus? I, that might have been the greatest investment of her life. To take her very best and to give her very best to her Lord. It's a picture of what God did for us with Jesus. It's a picture of the honor that he was due as our king, as our savior, as our Lord. It's, it's a beautiful picture, but Judas, it says in the scripture that Judas had his hand in the till. It says that he did not say this, verse six, because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as a keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. 
Judas was unethical, Judas was dishonest. There were different individuals, and this can be kind of crazy for us to hear, who walked with Jesus, who journeyed with Jesus, but they did not believe in Jesus. Uh, Judas eventually would betray Jesus, and he's called the son of perdition. The Bible says that he went to his own. We don't actually know, you know, many people that, you know, whether they went to heaven or hell, God doesn't just tell us, God makes that judgment. But in the Bible, God goes out of his way to tell us that Judas is in hell. And it kind of, it kind of gives you an awe because Judas was with Jesus, literally with Jesus Christ for three years, walking with him, journeying with him, seeing what he did. He saw the miracles, he saw the loaves and the fishes, he saw Jesus walk on water, but something inside of his heart chose to harden his heart and not to believe. And Judas had a heart that wasn't for the Lord. And he wanted to help himself to the money. Jesus looked at him, verse seven, and said, leave her alone. Jesus replied, it was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Jesus says something really interesting. He says, it was intended that she should save this perfume. There's something about this that was intentional. There was something about this that was foreseen. There was something about this that, that God foreknew this was significant. This needed to take place. Jesus would say, and he told you, you need to stop what you're doing because what she's doing is honoring me. It says, meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. The Jews were beginning to plot, the priests and the Pharisees were beginning to plot how they were going to kill Jesus. And really, we're going to begin our journey to the cross soon. And I believe it's so cool, one of the final statements that it made, that many people had come to believe in Jesus because of Lazarus. You might say, well, that was because he was raised from the dead and the miracle as possible. But I want to share this with you because I believe that Lazarus was an evangelist at heart. It's in Revelation. My mind says it's Revelation 12. It will show up on the screen. It says, and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. See, what we all have in common is the blood of the Lamb. I have the blood of Jesus Christ that oh, covers my life. You have the blood of Jesus Christ that covers your life. But what we have different is the word of our testimony. And yes, our testimony is is common in that Jesus Christ is at the center of our testimony, but it's different in that he did something different for you. He did something different for me. He did something different for Lazarus. And because of what he did for Lazarus, Lazarus was able to share, this is my testimony. You, you can say whatever you want, but I'm telling you, this is what happened in my life. This is the experience with Jesus that I had. And because of his testimony, many people had come to know Christ. And I believe that because of your testimony, because of my testimony, because of our testimony, if we're bold to share, many people will come to know Christ because of our faith, because of our walk, and because of our boldness to share what he's done in our life. Be blessed.